A new beta of Ecamm Live has just been released, Ecamm Live version 4 beta 16, and it's got some great new long-awaited, uh, long-requested features as well. So we'll be digging into all of those. That includes the new ISO video, a new camera switcher functionality, and also some new uh, functionality for live streaming as well. So uh, we'll dig into all of that. Before we do, though, I just want to mention that if you are on the regular version of Ecamm Live and you want to try out the beta, there's no sort of barrier to entry. You can just go and download it from the link in the description. Uh, you're definitely going to want to try out these features, I would say. Uh, it doesn't really interfere with the uh, main version that you've already got, so they run sort of side by side, so don't worry that you're going to mess up the settings on your uh, current live production version. And uh, saying that, you know, just make sure that you are aware that this is beta software, so you may not want to use it for anything mission critical. I, I like to live dangerously, so I'd use it all the time. <laughs> uh, but anyway, you can find a link to that down in the description. If you've got any comments, feedback, or anything like that about the beta, then also make sure that those go in the Ecamm Live beta Facebook group or the appropriate beta channel in the Ecamm Live Discord as well to sort of keep that distinction between the uh, beta and the regular version. Uh, anyway, enough of waffling. Let's get straight on into the demo, shall we? Uh, and I'm going to start with the camera switcher because this is some great new functionality and I really uh, do like this new feature that's been added in. Um, so we've always had this uh, camera switcher here, which, which is the way that when you have a scene source set as camera, as I do here, uh, you can use this to just sort of switch between uh, your different cameras. But what they've now added is uh, an entirely separate camera switcher window because a lot of people had asked for you know, can we make this a little bit bigger so that we can see the actual previews of all of these uh, different cameras? Or can we reorientate it? Maybe you might want it down the side or something like that. Uh, well, in my view, they've gone one better because we've now got this button up in the top corner uh, and you can click on that one uh, and that's going to pop out this entirely separate camera switcher window. And so uh, this has the same functionality as the other one, uh, but it's actually got so much more. Um, so you can uh, just drag this open. We can make it long. We can make it tall like that uh, so that the uh, little camera windows uh, stack up like that. Uh, we've also got a slider down here as well so you can zoom in so this actually becomes almost like a sort of full you know camera monitor where you can just see all of the uh, the different cameras that you've got at any one time. There is another way to do this as well, which we'll get onto in a moment, but I really like this. It means that you can really see clearly, uh, you know, what is going on in these different cameras. So it means, for example, if you are using interview mode and you've got, you know, a series of guests, then even if they're not in the active scene, um, you'll still be able to see, uh, you know, what's going on. If they're on camera, if they're ready to be, uh, be ready to be on screen and whatever, you're going to see all of that because as you can see, you've got the uh, connected cameras, but then we've also got the, uh, the guests here. And if you had multiple guests they would just appear in there uh, so just like the camera switcher in here it's simply a case of just you know clicking one of these and we're going to switch to that camera change to this camera so it is really easy to see what you're uh, switching to I really like that. You may then find that this uh, little camera switch in here is now completely redundant. And if you want to, you can actually disable it. So you can come into settings in the general, then you've got here show camera switcher in main window. So I'm going to just disable that because it was always just getting in the way for me. Uh, I should also say that uh, previously as well, the little floating window appeared all of the time uh, when you, you know, wh whatever you were doing in Ecamm. This actual switcher only really applies though when you've got scene source set as camera. So the way I normally build up my scenes is I generally start with a completely blank scene. Um, so let me just show you what I'm talking about. If I just come and create a completely new scene and then you can see the scene source is blank. Uh, and then I'm just going to build this up by adding in camera overlay. So let me just add in a camera overlay there, uh, just like that. Well, you'll notice that now actually they've completely removed the camera switcher because it's kind of redundant really in any case if you are using just camera overlays uh, because the switcher never applied to those. The way that you would change camera overlays before would be to come into the little pencil icon and then just pick whichever camera you wanted to uh, be using uh, nicely upside down there <laughs> for that instead. Um, so yeah, it has actually removed it completely from the, uh, the where you've got the scene source as blank. But even when you've got scene source as uh, a camera, so if I just come back to this one, um, as I say, you can just come into the preferences and you can uncheck show camera switcher in main window. So I'm going to do that so that basically that camera switcher is just no longer part of my, uh, my main window end interface. I'll definitely be using this one. In fact, I mentioned that uh, I never used to use the old camera switcher because I use camera overlays in all of my sort of scene building, whereas I will be using this one with uh, scene building. And the reason is uh, because if I uh, go back to that one where I had the scene source as camera, uh, in fact, let me just change this one. I'll come into here and I'll change this to scene source is blank. 
Now what you can do is you can just drag and drop the cameras. <laughs> I think that is fantastic. It's going to make it so quick to just sort of build out scenes, putting people, putting elements, putting cameras uh, wherever you want them. So you can just literally uh, drag and drop them. That one's not showing up, obviously, because I've got no guests on this uh, current stream at the moment. So uh, I really like this, uh, this functionality. I really like the way that it does sort of switch between these things. Uh, let me just put my source back to uh, camera again going to make it easier to uh, do some of these things so yeah being able to just sort of drag and drop things like that i think is uh, is really great the other thing that this opens up as well is uh, another little bit of uh, functionality and time saving which is the camera effects window so we've obviously had the camera effects for a long time where you can basically make adjustments to uh, different cameras uh, adjust the zoom adjust the brightness the picture and all of those kind of things um, but previously you would have to come into here and actually select the specific camera that you want from this drop down whereas now what they've done is they've actually added that uh, little shortcut to get to this um, into each of these little windows in the preview because as you can see we've got the little magic wand symbol which is the uh, the same symbol that you have for the camera effects normally for the, this this button over here is what we used to toggle that on and off um so now if you actually just click any one of these cameras you'll notice that if you look at the camera effects down below as i click through here it's actually switching those cameras so this is again, it makes it a really easy and quick way to go and make those adjustments. I think it's a massive improvement on the old uh, camera switcher, whether you're using scene sources camera or whether you're using camera overlays, as I say. They've also gone a little bit further though with this because what you can also do is if you click on the little three dots, uh, you can also pop out any of these particular camera sources and have them as an individual window. So now you really could have, you know, a monitor built up with, you know, all of your sort of key cameras that you want to be able to, to monitor. Um, and so if I just click on this one, show source in separate window, you can see it's just popped out that. So now I've got a completely separate floating window, which is that uh, that particular camera. And I could make this, uh, you know, however, however big I want. So uh, I can certainly imagine somebody doing a production with lots of different, uh, lots of people, different people coming in, perhaps, you know, maybe a virtual conference or something like that. And you want to have all of the speakers or maybe you've got, you know, a multi camera shot uh, for interviews or whatever it happens to be. Uh, you can just pop out multiple different cameras like this. So now we could have maybe these three cameras are the ones that we want to focus on. Uh, and why have we got this in addition to the camera switcher? Well, it gives you a lot more versatility because as you can see, um, you can actually make these, you know, maybe I might want to make that one the biggest one, uh, make that one down there. I could then add in this other one as well. Uh, and so where's that one gone? I think it's gone onto a different window. I'll pop out a different one for the purposes of this demonstration uh, like that. There we go. Let me try that again, shall I? Show source in separate window. Where's it gone? There it is. Uh, okay, so now we've got uh, those all like that. So the reason why you might want these on a separate window as well is imagine, for example, that somebody's running the show and you, you're you using the camera switcher, but you might want to move these all onto a completely separate monitor that you know everyone else can see, or it might be for, you know, sort of for other people viewing as well. So there's lots of reasons why you might want to sort of pop these out uh, completely separately. Uh, the other thing that you can do as well with this is you can, uh, you probably saw it there, um, source video monitor. So you can actually send one of these to a dedicated monitor or you know if you've got multiple monitors uh, set up you could send individual sources to individual monitors so i've got two other additional monitors here so i could just actually have you know a monitor dedicated to one particular camera feed uh, i really like that uh, that feature what they've also added in here though as well is um, uh, an entirely new concept which I think is going to be really powerful as well which is this idea of placeholder cameras so you'll notice at the top of the camera switcher at the moment it says all sources but if I come over to this a slash b um, that is what they call placeholder cameras and what that means is that you can build out a scene and instead of putting a specific camera in that place you can actually use one of these placeholder cameras this is really powerful for um, a couple of reasons. First of all, if somebody has got, uh, you know, multiple different cameras attached to their computer, specifically using CamLink, um, then uh, sometimes what can happen is if you shut down your computer uh, and restart it, the Mac sort of uh, loses the order or loses the idea of which camera is which. Uh, and there have been cases where, you know, people shut down the camera, uh, shut down their computer, start it up again, and then find that, oh, they've got to remap the, the cameras to the right scenes in Ecamm. And it's not Ecamm's fault, it is a Mac uh, issue. Um, but nevertheless, it is a problem for Ecamm users sometimes. There are ways around it. Um, but anyway, this actually basically solves that issue because now what you can do is you can assign a placeholder camera um, instead of a an actual camera and then that means you can just come and switch them out in here let me show you what i mean if i create a uh, a completely new scene as well uh come down here 
create a new scene. Um, so now let's say I want to put placeholder camera A in here and I'll put placeholder camera B in there. Um, then uh, what will happen is that one's upside down. Let me just go and fix that. <laughs> I'll fix that in here. Um, there we go. I've mounted it upside down. See. There we go. Um, so now we've got those two placeholder cameras, but I could come and just in here, switch out this one for any one of those other cameras. And you'll notice that it changes it in that scene. But you can do this for, you know, as many scenes as you've got. So in all of your scenes, as long as you have uh, used placeholder cameras, then basically you can just come in here and tweak them. And if your, your uh, computer has lost your cam link <laughs> order, uh, then you could just come in here and, uh, and change those out just in here. And it would propagate that through all of your different scenes. The other place where this is going to be really useful is actually if you are somebody who is you know creating scenes for other people maybe you are you know the producer and somebody else is uh, you know running the show sorry you're the designer somebody else is producing the show um, or maybe you are offering this as a service you know designing profile packs for people um, then this is going to allow you to drop these uh, placeholders in um, so that when somebody loads it up onto their computer then they all they need to do is go into the uh, the camera switcher go into the uh, placeholders section and then just switch those out you'll notice that there is uh, just two there at the moment but actually there's also this little plus icon at the bottom so you can just add another placeholder camera uh, add another placeholder camera and just sort of keep going and add and change those all out one thing to be aware of with this is that uh, you've actually just seen it that you know one of my cameras was upside down so the settings that you assign to the placeholders are separate from the settings that you apply to kind of that same camera in the regular view if you see what i mean so here i've got my uh, canon eos 60d this is my uh, camera a uh, so if i come in here and make some changes uh, to this like i'll uh, i'll just uh, wait a second come in here camera a like that i forgot to press the little uh, button there <laughs> so if i was to say um uh, i don't know change the, the change the brightness just completely screw this over uh, you can see that it's done some weird things to my camera there so if i come back into here and select my camera in here you'll see that the uh, the settings are are different so just make sure that um you know when you are tweaking things you understand the distinction between tweaking the dis the the settings on the actual um placeholder versus tweaking the settings on the uh, the actual camera itself um, this makes perfect sense though because you do want to be able to have this uh, sort of control you know separate control over these uh, these settings uh, as you might may want to use one in one place and one in the other so uh, I totally uh, get why it is this way and it makes sense we've also got the uh, ability to record isolated video of these uh, cameras as well uh, and the way that it's been implemented is kind of related to this because if I come into the settings once again uh, we've now got a completely new uh, recording tab so this tab up here recording um, and there's a couple of things that have moved actually so uh, audio previously recording isolated audio tracks which we've had for for a while now uh, that was previously in the audio section now that has moved to recording so i'll just jump ahead but record isolated audio tracks is there um, and then you can see here we've got uh, record all broadcasts so uh, that's worth choosing whether you want to record a local recording of uh, you know all of your uh, all of your your streams basically all your broadcasts um, so that's a toggle now there as well. Uh, but this is the really new section, record isolated video tracks. And basically what that means is, um, obviously you've got your main Ecamm production. Let me just change back to uh, this scene for you there. Uh, obviously you've got your main Ecamm uh, production, um, which is being recorded as a video file, whatever size that happens to be. Obviously we set the uh, stream size there to be either, uh, you know, low, medium, high, 1080p, 4K, whatever it happens to be, 2K. Uh, you can set that in, uh, in the options and the output um, but now what we've got is also the option to record as you can see camera a camera b and also interview guests so essentially of the cameras that you've got coming in you've seen that i've got uh, basically uh, six or five different cameras connected here um, then i can record basically two of those um, but then any interview guests a couple of things to uh, note about this well three things actually first of all it is only available to um, people on the pro plan uh, it's also only works with uh, m series max so apple silicon max um, because of uh, the sort of processing uh, load involved in it uh, and that being the third one 
you're basically recording now, in addition to the regular out output that you've got going out from uh, from Ecamm, uh, you're now, now asking the computer to encode uh, an entirely new <laughs> video file at the same time. Uh, and in fact, maybe not one, maybe two, maybe three, maybe 12, because <laughs> you've got two of your own cameras and you've got up to 10 guests. So think about how much extra processing power is going to be required to that. And just sort of bear that in mind, really, when you're deciding, you know, what to do with this. And if you have any issues, um, then <laughs> yeah, before jumping up and down and saying, uh, my computer's really slow, I've just been trying to record, uh, you know, 12 isolated video tracks, isolated audio tracks, and also my main feed, which is being recorded at 4k, uh, you may find that you have some processor issues. So just bear that in mind. That's a, a computer limitation, uh, not a, an ecam limitation. So on that point as well, the other thing about that is that the the maximum recording size of the isolated video files is going to be 1080p. So you can't record at the moment 4k for the ISO files, your original recording obviously still will be at whatever you've set that to but just the ISO videos are not going to be uh, up to a 4k. Uh, maybe when their process is increased, they can uh, bump that up a little bit. But as I say, computer limitation. Anyway, what you've also got, though, is you can, as well as recording isolated audio tracks, um, just as we've been able to before, you can also choose which audio you want to be included with those uh, those cameras and those uh, those guests as well. So the default here is that the uh, is program audio for the camera feeds on your computer and then guest audio for your interview guest, which makes sense because you want you know an isolated feed for your guest and their specific audio. Uh, but what you can do here is you can change this to either none, maybe you just want a feed with no audio, uh, you can also change it to program audio or primary mic or secondary mic. So it may be that you've got sort of, you know, the like in this case, this shot here, I would likely want to have my camera uh, recording my uh, audio and just have the uh, the primary mic, so this microphone, uh, and I want that with this shot. But maybe the uh, you know over the cam the, over the headshot or something like that uh, coming from this side. Maybe I want the full program audio. Maybe it's a wide shot of you doing an interview or something like that, and you want the full audio in there. Whatever it happens to be, so you can uh, choose this. And as I say, this is related to camera A and B in the switcher. So if I was to come into camera B, you'll notice that it does say in brackets with the name of the actual camera that's uh, allocated to that uh, that camera in the switcher. So if I come back to the switcher and change this to uh, say this one, um, then now you'll see that that is now recording that separate file there as well. Um, I should say that as this is recording, um, I am recording ISO video at the moment. So it is technically, you know, switching these uh, as we go through as well. Uh, so that is something to bear in mind. You can have an ISO video file and then sort of switch part way through as well. Now, if I come over to the uh, uh, finder, what you'll see is this is what it's going to look like basically in your output when you've got the uh, the files out at the end of the recording. Uh, here we've got ISO video, uh, sorry, ISO audio to start. So main mic, sound effects and guest. Um, and then in this case for this test that I did earlier. Um, and then we've also got the Ecamm Live main recording. Then I've got camera A, camera B. And I've also got the uh, guest one there as well. So that was basically ISO video with one guest. Um, and so I've got four files. Uh, hopefully that all is pretty logical and makes sense. But yeah, do certainly uh, bear in mind the uh, processor hit that you're going to be uh, taking with all of this. Now, I should say that the, all of these uh, updates, when it makes it into the final release, we're not far away from Ecamm Live version 4. The uh, developers, Kent and Glenn, have said that, uh, you know, this is pretty much the full features now. Uh, there will be sort of tweaks and things like that based on sort of feedback uh, from these betas. Uh, but we are pretty close now to the Ecamm Live version 4. Now, when that happens, I will be updating my Ecamm Live masterclass. Uh, you can already get access right now, though. It's over 100 videos uh, covering everything from absolute beginner all the way through to advanced of Ecamm Live. It's your on online encyclopedia, basically, where you've got all of the latest information. And part of the reason I made it was because there are so many features constantly being added to Ecamm Live that I wanted to have a place where, you know, you could always know that you get the latest information. I've got hundreds of videos on uh, Ecamm on my channel. Well, 150, <laughs> to be precise. Um, and uh, But some of those are out of date because of the new features. Well, the Ecamm Live Masterclass resolves that because it's you basically pay once you get lifetime access to all of those updates always the latest information it also covers stream deck how to use stream deck with ecamm how to program stream deck how to use ecamm to uh, go into zoom and level up your zoom presentations how to use it with uh, things like keynote as well and of course all of the other tech that goes along with ecamm so you can find out more about that at ecamlivemasterclass.com uh, and use the offer code cyber22 from now through to cyber monday and you can get an extra 35 percent off so uh, link to all of that in the description as well, but definitely uh, check that out. 
Okay, so aside from uh, the camera switcher and the ISO video, only a couple of minor features, <laughs> uh, there is also uh, some new functionality when it comes to live streaming. So you'll see here that we've got the uh, view count just up at the top corner. Uh, where is it? Just there. Uh, we've got the view count and also the number of thumbs up. Uh, well, what they've added in now is if I click on this, uh, because I am multi-streaming, which obviously is another feature of the beta coming to version four in one of the previous betas, it was added in. Uh, so I'm streaming to two platforms directly from from Ecamm at the moment. Uh, well, this little drop down now can show you exactly where those viewers and those likes are. So I'm watching myself on YouTube, very sad. And uh, you can see that uh, I've just got one thumbs up. So it's gonna show you that differentiation. So when you are multi-streaming, you're gonna see where your audience is, which I think is a really great little feature. The other thing that you can do from here then as well, is you've got this little icon next to each one. Well, first of all, let me just highlight this. You can see how it's got a little green icon and it says streaming. So you've got that little sort of confidence uh, of uh, knowing that uh, you are actually streaming to those platforms. Uh, but if I click this little icon next to that, um, you've got a few different options here. So we can say view in Safari, uh, copy the video URL. So if you're live streaming and you wanna, I don't know, you've started the stream, you wanna copy the URL, paste it into Twitter or something like that to uh, let people know that you're streaming, whatever it happens to be or in a message, you can do that from there. Uh, you can also go directly to Facebook producer, or if you are in YouTube, then you can go to YouTube studio and so on. Uh, but now what we can also do though, is actually end the stream on individual platforms. So I might say now, right, well, I'm actually gonna end the stream now on Facebook. So why might you wanna do that? Well, you may wanna just sort of have a, a start of a, um, uh, a stream on a particular platform or multiple platforms, but then you go into like a member section or something like that, or you start the stream on a certain platform, but then send everyone over to someone else to somewhere else to uh, sort of continue the stream on uh, and sort of close down all the others. So whatever the case, uh, you can uh, do that from there now. So now you can clearly see we are stopped on Facebook, uh, but we are still streaming to YouTube. The other thing that they've done related to live streaming is actually they've added in the ability to activate um, captions in LinkedIn. So what you'll see is when you are scheduling a stream now in LinkedIn, um, you've got this extra little checkbox to uh, additional platform options, uh, generate automatic captions. So that is uh, specifically a LinkedIn feature that they've added. Another thing they've done is they've updated the widget overlay feature. So if I uh, just come back here, then uh, what it looks like now is um, I've just got a, a widget here, which just happens to be my website. Obviously, you may have some different types of widgets, um, but previously widgets were basically just on the screen. I mean, they can be for all sorts of things. I use one for my buy me a coffee link, link in the description. <laughs> I also use it for, you know, subscribe accounts and things like that. Uh, but what some widgets uh, allow for sort of interaction or maybe require interaction and a case in point would be if you'd got some sort of video player that you wanted to put over the top as a widget as an overlay um, um, or in this case i'm just showing you my website just for the uh, sake of uh, demonstration uh, widget overlays by the way are just down here so the one that looks like the little world icon uh, click on the little plus icon and there you can add in the url for the widget and give it a name if you want so that's how it'll appear in your overlays uh, list uh, but from here, now what they've added is you'll see just below the widget overlay, we've got this little icon of the uh, you know, the finger uh, pressing there, and then you can toggle this one on. And this basically allows you to interact with the widget. So if I toggle that one on, now what you'll see is now that I'm hovering over the widget, I can actually scroll the web page. I can go and click on something. So if I click on this button, the button is going to actually work. It's going to go to the next page um, like that. And then you can also use the forward and backward buttons here. So if you are on a web page, you can scroll forwards and backwards. So um, obviously, you know, screen sharing and screen sharing a web page is, uh, is one thing, but there may be cases where you actually just want that embedded as a widget. Like I say, for things like video players and, uh, and the like, then it's going to be really uh, useful for that. If you're on macOS Ventura, then you may be familiar with the continuity camera feature, which allows you to use your iPad and iPhone as a camera, um, as a webcam for your Mac. The way that that would work is that every time something wanted to use your continuity camera, then it would just pop up in a little uh, alert for you to say that uh, something was trying to access it. Well, obviously with Ecamm, uh, you know, you might have that running a lot of the time and you might not want it making these sort of calls to continuity camera. So uh, now, uh, although it will appear there in the switcher, there is just a sort of click to activate uh, for continuity camera within Ecamm. Now that pretty much wraps up all of the awesome new features. As I say, you can get a link to this down in the description if you're not on the beta already. Definitely worth uh, trying it out. Uh, I'll leave a link also to uh, another great Ecamm video over on the right hand side. And I've just got to say a big thank you to my channel members whose names are coming up now uh, because they uh, help keep the lights on in the studio. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your ongoing support. Have a great day everyone and enjoy the beta.